And here we go. So you don't have to wait any longer. People were waiting for Magnus versus Ali Reza. Now they get it. It is game one. Magnus with the white pieces. He adopts a pretty solid setup. So far, nothing too major has happened. But that D4 square, black can sink a knight in there. That could be good news. I just learned something so quick already. I mean, you know, I'm a KID specialist. And I love Kings Indian. I just won. I think it's a strong I am in my last tournament. You know, KID for life, right? Is what we say, but what he did was he moved his knight from f8 around to e6 very quickly. He got the knight over to h7, so it was pretty quiet. Quickly, and this, Agnes is holding everything. It's a game of knight maneuvers. That knight went from e6 to c7, and it's up to b5 now. So it can't stop, won't stop. The knight continues its tour of this board, and now the white knight's turn to improve itself. Lots of maneuvering. G4, knight f3, bishop g4. There, oh, trade. Mm -hmm. Knight f3. So I feel like black is doing quite nicely. Look at this activity for the pieces. Ooh, G5 fell off, but was that a blunder or a sacrifice? Yeah, because he didn't move instantly, I think it was a blunder. <laughs> but, I mean, he did find something out of that. He's still doing well. Oh, my goodness. King's mm -hmm. Indian for the win. We don't ever have to play another opening. King's Indian mm -hmm. for the win once again. Can we get some KID in the chat? King's Indian defense. I'm always a special player. Special and place my heart with that. Can we get some King's Indian in the chat? Who likes King's Indian defense? This one's a wrap. It's, that queen is trapped. Let's go up to E2. Then you force the queens off. And you win the ensuing endgame. Magnus resigns. He doesn't want to test Ali Reza's mouse speed. He knows that it would be over. So Ali Reza Faruja is the first player on the scoreboard. He gets up one to nothing. And now in game two, Magnus, he's given up a pawn. Will he get it back? Uh, his the question here is, will he get it back? Okay. I do like White's position here. The space. I mean, it's this advantage. You got the queen to e3. Everything's defended. Then he attacks the pawn again. Castles. I take g4. Hey. You know what? That knight on e7. Is that really a knight? That doesn't look like the pony that kids dream about. That knight can't go anywhere. Oh, but those pawns are all dropping off. It takes. Yeah, they now drop. It can't get out to Magnus here. Queen g5. Takes. Ugh. Yep. Magnus is back. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to let this one slip. But if you take this bishop on c3, then white takes the knight on e7, and then there's knight g5 ideas. That king is in trouble, and now b7's gone. That gives white a passer. Oh, my goodness. Bro. It's about to be a 2-0. Oh, Faruja, relax. You know this is Magnus, right? Like, you know this is Magnus. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you know that. Like, this is Magnus. Earl's. It's Maybe Magnus he's winning Earl. now? There it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he resigned. All right, you get All this right, one. It's 2 nothing, And another reminder that we are 45 minutes of bullet chess in the matches in the winner's semifinals and beyond in the winner's bracket. So uh, this gives Magnus more time. Even if he loses this game, he has a little bit more time to catch up. Sometimes, James, people need to find their rhythm. They just can't uh, find their form from the start. That's right. It does take some time there. We do have actually MBL in the chat. Oh, MBL chat. So, dog, is, uh, he's going for... For the um, for Ali Reza there, I think he's shooting for Ali Reza. Rook takes e4, interesting. Yeah, what's happening here? It looks like the rook just has to back up, and the a6 pawn that is going to be a long-term target. So Magnus just trying to coordinate his pieces. And shout out to MVL, one of the best chess players in history, a former World Blitz champion. Uh, he's had so many successes to his name, but he's rooting for his compatriot. That Ali Reza Fruja plays for France. And bam! Bishop h2 check will follow if the knight were to move. So Ali Reza just won a piece. He's probably thanking his friend Maxime for stopping by. Got a little freeze there. Okay, we're back. Hey, what happened? Actually, uh, internet. I think we're good. <laughs> You're good, James? I think we're good. I think we're good here. What happened in this last game here? Oh, oh Ali Reza? Bro, what? No, that, yeah. it's two to one, right? No, 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 no. Ali Reza won again. He doesn't stop winning. He, That's what's happening. Wait. Is this yeah. really 3 0? It's 3 0. It is. No, That's not a typo? Three. That's not a typo. Robert. <laughs> Let me ask you again, Robert. Is this a typo or like, I mean, my internet went out a little bit. <laughs> it, you know, it's I not a typo. You, is this Magnus has not won a game in the first three. He's trying to win this fourth one. Ah! Yeah, you crazy. <laughs> you crazy. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I got to go back and watch the VOD. Uh oh. Whoa. Uh oh. What? Magnus allows E7. The pass pawn can go up, but all there is, it doesn't play at first. And now the E pawn is. It's gone. He's just dropping. What is it. this? Okay, he okay, so 
if he's back in the game, I was just kind of silent here because I was just looking at like, bro, Magnus is out three games. Like, <laughs> what if he loses another one? And I'm like, I'm going to be over here sweating like I'm playing, like literally. Whoa, yeah. that's just nice. Yeah, he's winning now. Magnus should yeah, his bishop's protected by the rook, and so now he has up one pawn. But very importantly, the white king is in danger, and the h2 pawn, that's essential. You need to keep that one, and black has gained a passer. Dang. Whoa, push, push. Oh, we can, yeah, this is just over. It's over. We just hit the button, resign there, in respect, right? But let me keep playing it. Play it out. Yeah, he resigned now. Whatever. Look at the clock, by the there way. Mag is. Magnus finished that game up 15 seconds. Like, he played fast, he played well, and he put pressure on Ferruja both on the board and on the clock. I am uh, very impressed. I mean, I think everyone is right now. I think everyone, I think everybody's on the edge of their seat seeing Ferruja go 3-0. Whoa, hey, man, hold on, bro. This is, like, not supposed to be cool. Like, <laughs> this definitely was um, was crazy, I mean, to see. I'm, I'm excited to see the rest of this, obviously. Maybe three, maybe five, take, take. This is all theory. H3, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but this is the type of theory that I know puts you to sleep. You're like, come on, we're yeah. the Tactinos. <sighs> exactly, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And this was none of those in this game. But, of course, he could have tried B6 at one point after C6 just to keep the pawn as a wedge there. But it might be weak after C5. Whatever. Pull the game, right? But still uh, very theoretical. Rook B1. Yeah. Rook Ooh, B8. Nice oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. He wants to trade because E4 is now loose and it's grabbed. And that's an extra pawn for Ferruja. No, the rooks takes takes. He does not knight c4. F3, knight f6. Takes takes. D5 is hanging. D6 is hanging. They both hang in there. It might be draw. You know, he can definitely draw these type of positions, but bullet changes everything up. It does. I'm looking at the clock. So, of course, we see the eval bar suggesting that Ferruja is better, but I'm looking at the time and Magnus up a couple seconds. So, he's going to use that to his advantage. You can't afford a knight trade. That's why he drops his knight back. Ferruja is doing this perfectly. Just go after oh, white man. pawns and you get a bit more active. Look at that Magnus getting Magnus. You know what I mean? Like, when do you ever see that? Magnus getting Magnus in the end game right now. It's still chances for a draw. Still chances. Very difficult. Yeah, you know Ooh, what you just yeah, gotta do? Tough. Just move. That's all you have to do if you're Magnus. Look at the clock. Yeah. I don't think Ali Reza has enough time to convert this advantage. Okay. This is a moment of silence right now. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm like silent. Like <laughs> I gotta see if he's gonna convert this. Oh man, check move. Okay, King. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nine G four. Doing good. Oh, progress Ferruja, he's almost there magnus paused which was probably not a good thing to do there at that moment because oh now Ferruja has it he's beating oh mm -hmm. my goodness this guy is unreal mm -hmm. Ferruja, and, relax and magnus is frustrated you can see it on his face that deep sigh of just like what do i have to do to survive against this youngster but Ferruja, he's determined you know he wants to win yeah he's uh I mean, he's, he is ready to be Magnus here in front of everyone. He's trying to. Now, obviously, Magnus, it's, it's a lot of time left, 36 minutes. But Ali Reza is up three games right now, and he's in great form, very hot. We're going to see what happens here. Wow. This is crazy to see. Okay, so focus, take stakes, rook d1, 27, everything equal-ish. Yeah, opposite colored bishops. But white's queen is you know, just annoying to the black pawns on the queen side. So everything protected in the position for both players. I don't see a single weakness. And now the pieces are coming off. So as you said, equalish is probably leading towards drawish. Definitely, yeah. It, it, it bullet changes everything too. Like we have one mistake in the end game on move 46 when you should have went king e6 instead of king d6. Now you zugged out Devoretsky page 820, right? <laughs> you actually like, then you lose in a bullet game. Like it's crazy, the high level bullet. And, I mean, we agree with that by a Ninja 26. This should be broadcast on every existing screen in the world. Uh, yeah, this is two of the best players of all time, two of the best players currently, who are now going to try to flag each other. They'll probably just make a repetition in a Bishop of Opposite Color ending. So the draw has happened, repetition, and that means that Ferruja keeps his three-game lead. How is Magnus going to take Alariza down? That is what we need to see before we can believe in Magnus's chances. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of... Oh, D5. Whoa, that is not familiar with that. I think there was some recent theory with this. Oh, yeah, it was Jordan, Jordan, right? Jordan Van Forest, I think. It's like some interesting stuff. Rook C1, 5, Bishop C2, 
two or bishop d5. E4 doesn't care about any of that. Yeah, white has the center, but black has the bishop pair. And you mentioned Air Jordan, who's been a second for uh, Magnus before. And look at these pawns. What is happening in the center of the board? Rook takes e5. There's g4 blocking the pin. Oh, that's nice. So he could have taken the f3 first. Queen f3 hits f7. So he takes. Now he goes for it anyway? Oh, rook d5. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So many tactics. Yeah, but white has to be better here. Look at this. You're going on the attack, on the offensive. Rook c6 comes to mind, and it's played. And now is a pass pawn. D7, Rook C8. Yeah, he's feeling good. There we go. Magnus back. Yeah. Magnus back there. Magnus back there. That's a dub because the Black King can reach E7, but there's Knight C6 check at the end, and we're seeing something like it. Uh, I think Alarizza will just resign in a couple moves, or maybe uh, there is the resignation. I'd say maybe he's thinking about match strategy. Let's play these out. It's too early in the match. There's still 34 minutes remaining. But you know in the back of his head, he's like, all right, I have the lead. Maybe I should burn some of the clock. Right, maybe he's going to burn some clock here. And then we have a, a French, man, another French here. Magnus has been playing a lot of this lately, actually. Frenchies. Mm -hmm. I hate giving up that light square bishop, but that is theory. I like going more bishop d3 to keep it and queen e2 here. Same position, but the, you still have a bishop here. I'm with you. I love that light square bishop in the French, but... Uh, it looks like Ali Reza says, I'm just going to lead in development. But Magnus has found a way to castle. So he has the bishop pair. And if you get e5 next, followed by bishop e6, mm -hmm. suddenly we're talking about an advantage for black with open space. That's what he does, does as well. He goes back to c3 instead of queen d5 check, allowing bishop e6. Queen c3, take, take, bishop f5. And this is a fine French. It's kind of annoying when you get the French like this. Black definitely has some nice chances himself. He might have g4. g4 there. Uh, rook c4. Those queens, I was going to say, bring something to c4, bring your rooks in the game. And I guess white has a pawn advantage on the queen side, three on two, but black has such a nice central pawn on e5, and I don't see how white makes any initial progress. Very difficult to do that. Uh, oh, that's a nice knight, though, on d5. But it's only a good knight. It just looks great. Yeah, yeah, but c6, that was beautiful. d4, man, look at the... This is the Magnus work. Magnus working there. Pieces on the greatest squares. King on f5. Can't really do anything. King runs in at some point. f6 is defended. This was a clinical way to here, do it. Here it comes. King e4, king f3. And that should be that. Okay, f5 is a nice move to include. Uh, but here comes the black king. f4 check. He allowed f4 check. Oh, my oh. goodness. He, he hated it. You can see it in his face. He's losing. What is mm -hmm. this, bro? This doesn't make any sense. Takes, no. takes. This is bullet chess for you, Look at man. the clock. Speaking of bullet chess, Magnus is ahead on time, so he's losing by position because he was doing all that funny business, but he's actually... Oh, is he ahead? Not for long. Now he's behind. Four seconds here. Pre-move, pre-move, pre-move. Everything's pre-move from this point out. Yeah, he's going... Oh! 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 Youngest Rook! What is going to happen? Oh, he flags! He hits the table. He smiles. Oh, this is about to get serious. Oh, man! <laughs> He mad now. He oh, mad now. My goodness. Oh, man, this is about to get crazy. That w Faruja gave away his rook because he was essentially pre-moving. Magnus took the rook but didn't have enough time remaining to steal the last few pawns and secure a draw. So Faruja gets another win. Magnus slams the table. He gives a smile, though, because I think he appreciates it, right? You know, he's like, all right, respect, young fella. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely mad. And it is respect because he said, you know, even the world championship, like, hey, look, I'm not interested unless I'm playing Ferruja here. So he always has this because Ferruja, you know, I mean, everybody gets challenges there. But, man, Ferruja is up, you know, three games on Magnus like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Look at Magnus molding. Oh, man, this is crazy. To see. I've never seen this. Before. Never seen this. I don't think Chad has either. Magnus is simply down a pawn right now, but f5 is a good move. The black king cannot enter back on the e-file. There'll be rookie one check with a skewer. So white's trying to push the pawn, go king of four, and look at the clock that Alarizza just burned. Suddenly Magnus is up like eight seconds, and now the advantage is also heading back towards his direction. Yeah, it's looking good here. Takes, takes. I mean, he's, he's getting the right positions. What's the time? Okay, so he's up 10 seconds. Oh. How is that losing? Are you kidding me? What? Great move by Farouk it's, getting his oh, rook behind his goodness. pass pawn. Yeah, it takes and you're not fast enough. If you sack the rook, uh, he's trying though. He got two pawns there. You're gonna check him and push him away. It's a win for Frugia. And it's Oh! Wait, I sorry, I thought it was White's move. I thought there was like a pre-move, but it was Black's turn after Rook H8. So both sides are just queened. Wait, what's happening? Rook C8 and take on C4. What happened? Oh, he's back in the game. 
Oh man, bullet is unreal. I don't know. I'm over here sweating like I'm playing. Like this is wow. This is so crazy to see. Okay, B six Z. I'll take yeah. Yeah, just go to the A file. So what Max is gonna do is pre move like nonstop. He should just go King A two. He <laughs> he went Pac Man, but he could have went King A two, King A one, and so on. But that was crazy, James, because Ferruja was completely winning, and then Magnus, right. you know, he just took all the tricks out of his bag and he he saved one. Right, he saved one there. He definitely got away. I would breathe a little bit. All right, whew, I can breathe because that was going to be four points. When you get four, not only are you mad, but you're down four points and you're mad. You know that's different. That is mm -hmm. a different feel. And time is running out. I remember looking at the clock and it said forty-five minutes at some point, right? With twenty-nine minutes, guys, right? I mean, we love seeing these games, but the time is eventually going to run out, and someone is going to be a winner here today. Right now, Perugia up games on Magnus three games. Insane. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Knight e6, Whoa, he goes for relax, the sack, man. but it feels like <laughs> White's king has no shelter. Definitely, he takes on c4, takes on, okay, because queen c6, oh yeah, played it anyway, f3, yep. Yeah, black suit, yeah. bro, you have no pieces, he did too much there. Yep, two minor Wait. pieces for a rook, and black has, well, a very safe king, and now the initiative with all these pieces coming forward. So Magnus, he needs this game, he's also up 15 plus seconds. That's yes, that's good. over. Yeah, you can just resign now. Yeah, this is over. He's just starting another game. He got crushed that game. In fact, Magnus, yeah, that's a mad Magnus. That was a dominating game here. Five, yeah, yeah. And this opening Scandinavian, it worked out for Magnus, playing some offbeat stuff, trying to, uh, you know, keep Alvarez out of his comfort zones. But suddenly, it feels like Ali's back in the game, except for the fact that he's so far down on the clock. Eight seconds here, and then we will probably we could see a flag on the other end. So rook b1, he gets a couple checks. Mm -hmm. Magnus needs to check. flag him. Ah, uh, he takes this rook. That was a very smart move, bishop to b4. Okay. It's happening. H5 doesn't work yet. You don't know what's gonna happen. You see this the Eva bar going nuts here. Okay, f5 bishop back up. We got material b2s hanging, not anymore. Check king moves. Oh. We check again. Wait, what happened to the... He, he's pre-moving. Magnus is trying to play very quickly, oh. and that's why he's giving away pieces. But we do see that Magnus... Oh, my gosh! He's moving too slowly. He takes the queen, but he's going to lose on time. Oh! Ferruja gets it. Oh, he loses on time! He loses on time! Oh. Did he lose on time, bro? He did, and you could tell he took one from Taylor Swift. He's trying to shake it off. But Ferruja says, I don't care how I get the dub as long as I keep on winning. Yo, I, I'm, my hand might be going through the computer if I'm not like here, Magnus. The whole arm might go through the computer there. Wow, he flagged him again. I wonder how the internet connection is out there in Barcelona, the hotel that the Chess Bras and uh, Magnus are staying at. Uh, you know, that doesn't seem to be what's deciding these games. But at any moment, you know, you you need to make sure. What? Wait. Wasn't Rook takes D4 a free piece? I thought it was too as well. Wait, there was... Yeah, that's just free. <laughs> yeah, that's just free. That's for me. <laughs> Rook takes D4 was definitely a move. Oh, man, you can see he's over here in... Yeah, yeah, using the words. Whatever that is, that's definitely probably some adult language. <laughs> um, wow. I mentioned what he said over here, but it is definitely not looking good right now for me. He's just... Man, Ruja is working. Unbelievable. Here. I really thought Magnus had the upper hand, I'm not going to lie, but I think everyone did. But, uh, wow, got some work to do if he's going to come back. So what I ask, is Ferruja even the underdog? I actually didn't think so, and he's proving that he can hang with Magnus and not just hang with him. He has a big lead. And right now, Magnus may be up about eight seconds, but Ferruja's up a pawn. So I don't know how to weigh that trade off. Yeah, ooh, that was nice. That G4 there takes, takes. Wow, yeah, you got a draw to this. Um, okay, you know what? Let's stop saying that. These games don't it? You be it's a draw, and then they flag. <laughs> like, it's this is anybody's game. Even White can win this, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. But the clock situation is, you know, it's getting closer to level. That's good news for Ferruja, who's up a pawn, and I think he's he wants to win this game. He's looking at Magnus and saying, "You're not quick enough to hang with me." Wow, wow! I wouldn't. Them words would never come out of my mouth. Like, I mean, unbelievable, you know, but right now it is working in Ferruja's favor. He had two games by flag. And again, it doesn't matter how you get it. It matters. Did you get it done? Oh! Right. So he oh! does. It. Oh, wait, he removed and he yep. may not be getting it done here, baby boy. 
And, and let's oh. see the, let's see the speed from from Magnus. He's not putting the king in check at all. He needs to put that king oh, in check. Definitely the internet. Woo! He won oh, point, he one. point one, point one, point one. Oh, and Faruja left his yes, chair. Sir, he got up. He like, Where'd nah, you go, Ali Reza? Do you think he threw he, the mouse? Where did he go? He probably did. <laughs> <laughs> he might have thrown the mouse off instinct and like, oh my bad, I forgot. Let me uh, reach in the box for the next mouse because uh, I got a box of mice next to me because I break a lot of them. Point one. Wow, and for once, Magnus steals a victory. I mean, that one was ever so close. 0.1 seconds left. That is all you need to win a game on time. And now we're back to a three-point deficit. And if we look at this game here, it looks like Magnus, with the black pieces, has control of the open file. He also has a 10-second lead on the clock. So Magnus, James, he's been jumping out to the early leads in these games, but then Faruja speeds up, and that's where he does his damage. And the problem is, you know, Faruja is not only speeding up, but he's playing super tricky. Some stuff is very accurate. And you get these attacks and these tactics out of nowhere because, you know, he's a tactical absolute wizard with this stuff. Faruja is, of course. And Magnus can spot tactics too as well. But even in Magnus's style, he just doesn't care as much for the opening advantages. He likes the grinds, the slow chess. He can do anything. Universal player. Ooh. But uh, Faruja with these tricks, man, and the timing. Ooh. Like, ooh, easy four takes takes. That's clinical. So Magnus could have traded pieces. He said, I don't want to trade pieces. Look at the pawn structure. Double ISOs on F file and D file, and the rook just fell in the corner. So now black is up a full piece with the safer king. Bring your knight into the attack. There it is. Oh, but queen of fate. Watch out for queen of fate. Queen of fate. Oh, my God. Queen of fate. Queen of fate. Queen of fate. Oh, he pre no. Oh, my God. He broke oh. the queen. Oh, oh and Faruja oh. might break another Let's mouse. Go, Magnus, with the heat. He shook his hands. Oh, let me shake it off. Let me stretch and flex real quick. Y'all forgot my name's Mac. Oh my goodness, Faruja did the worst thing imaginable. He took that rook, which was smart, but Magnus saw that coming. He said, if I take your rook, I get checkmated when that pawn promotes. He ran his king away, and Faruja was pre-moving. You can't pre-move that early. I think he himself would tell you that if you, you asked him advice on how to improve as a bullet player. You can't pre-move that early because when you get hit with an unexpected move, you're the one who's going to be in trouble. And well, we're looking at trouble for Magnus. He just won a couple games. But now he's just a terrible position from the white side. This is pretty gross. But he did definitely win back, and now he's feeling good. I mean, I feel, hey, got some games in. It's a two-game match. I make it a one-game match. We can play this forever. Of course, we don't allow that here with the format. But we would like to see it. And, you know, people have took off work for this. Let's go. Rook C3. Rook G3 does have some type of attack. Head shake there from Ferruja. Mm-hmm, because look at that. Rook H3. He doesn't want a black rook to help in the defense. Gross. And E3. Just a, a calm little move saying you are not going to take an E2 with check. Now the black king is hunted. Queen G7. Queen takes F7. Uh, there's probably other things. Oh, Bishop C6. He doesn't even go for the check just yet. Wow, because he wants Queen D5 after all of that. Queen oh, G7, Queen F7. He, he blundered in a lot of queen trade. Jeez. Oh, no. All his pieces are gone. And he's mad. He's very, very mad. I think he's trying to convince himself that he can do this by shaking out all those blunders. Shake it out. You know what? That's new. That's what we're doing. You shake out the bar. All right, cool. Let me shake. <laughs> Shoot. A lot of y'all need to hyperventilate shake. So let's get the shakes out. If we're shaking the blunders out, that's what we're doing. Perfect. Perfect. Shake it off, chat. Shake it off. Take the blunders out. All right, cool. That's the new thing. The new thing. Yeah, you know. What? There's uh, the Harlem shake, and then there's the Magnus shake. And then there's, <laughs> Magnus shake. You know, then there's the chocolate shake that I want to drink. So you know, either, either way we look at it, it looks like Magnus, he's playing a good game here. Rook D2 hits B2, hits F2, and Bishop A6 wow. is going to hurt at some point as well. Or Rook is on C2. He's beginning a lot of Rooks to the seventh here. Takes, takes, Bishop B6, very strong. A4 wants A5, looks like. Maybe Rook to B1 takes on C6. So D8 is hanging. Magnus with a head shake there. He's seen a lot of that, man, from both sides, too. But, man, he's just really frustrating Magnus. It's understandable. So A4 is on a light square. C4 is on a light square. That's good news. When they have a light square bishop and down goes the pawn, Fruja decides to sacrifice it to give Magnus double pawns. But this is looking good for Black at the stage. And I'm looking at the clock again. Magnus is the faster player out of the gates. But then Faruja, he gets into that next gear at some point. Yeah, I think he started getting into that next gear after he figures out the opening. I'm, that's what I'm saying. He's like, oh, this will be doing? All right, cool. Then you just start speeding, which is causing some of his demise. Well, when it comes to like that pre-move game where he sacked the queen, it was brilliant. And then you lost immediately afterwards to the pre-move. So and here we go. The hand. 
I, I saw a feature in chat a. that the mouse might be too small for him and causing him some pain. So uh, if we do get an interview with Magnus, we'll have yeah, to hear yeah, about yeah. it. He does actually seem physically pained. That actually does seem correct, 100%. And it is important, guys, to grab the right mouse. And I'm sure he knows that. I mean, he's not his first time. You know, he even streams too as well. But we do need to get him something probably better uh, for that. I think he does have some wrist problems with that. It was some shaking, but then with the constant of it and it's match that can affect his play. And I like this comment. Bullet chess is a dance competition for the eval bar. Yeah, that thing's going up and down. It's a workout, all right? You know, Stockfish, right. Leela, you know, they don't get enough. You know, they're not enough challenges here. So bullet chess uh, will do that. And H4 just dropped. Knight comes into G5. I see the eval bar saying white's only like slightly better. I would initially think this is completely winning. And Magnus is also up 10 seconds. But he made very practical. Oh, but yes, uh, yeah. And then having a right mouse is very important, guys. Of course, I think some of the flagging was due to the mouse and his hand actually cramping probably with the mouse that he's using. We do have to ask to see what's about that if we get an interview with him. But yeah, something to definitely think about as we see the handshake after like every game now. And I'm looking at the clock and every game it does <laughs> seem like Magnus is well ahead and Right now, right. he is up nine seconds. So this is where Ali Riz needs to be careful. You can't just pre-move certain decisions. And Magnus is going for the win. He has decided to spring free a pass pawn. Whoa. He can go for G7. But he has to stop the C pawn first. That's smart. Very strong. Very strong. That's sick. Mm -hmm. Even do. You have to sacrifice. Try to win the A pawn. And what? Or oh, Bishop takes C5. And he goes B3. What a move. And A3, Magnus wants to win. He wants to flag the guy. A3, Magnus. Seven seconds. Great move, Bishop B5. That is GG. Yeah, that's GG. Just On diagonal that. method after that, push, check. And he won the C pawn. He won. What a game. See, that's what happens when you have a lead on the clock. You can take certain risks. You can make some decisions that may not be objectively the best, but... In terms of chess play, but they're objectively best in bullet. And Magnus gets the dub. Ali Reza, he sees that his lead shrink to two. He's still doing really well, playing great bullet. But, James, I think we have to say that Magnus must be feeling good about the conclusion of that game. And actually, you know what? I'm looking at the feature chat. Mouse is the 19th piece, right? So we talk about the clock. And then you need a mouse, right? So, like, it's different. That's just so funny. Extra piece oh. there. Whoa, what oh. happened? What the? Oh. Hey, bro, what likes? Whoa, whoa. We was just, whoa. Yeah, he's in pain. Yeah, he's really pain. is. And I think he's in pain he because is. he just got his king slammed off the board with knight takes e7 and a fork. So, uh, I mean, that's the problem that Magnus has had right now. Is he gets a couple of wins, and then he has, like, a really bad loss in there. And it's credit to Ali Reza for just taking it to him. I mean, Ali Reza knows he's going to lose some games. You're playing Magnus Carlsen. You're playing bullet chess. But I think he recovers very nicely. Yeah, absolutely. The recovery. And that, that comes with, obviously, 100% youth not having as many games. I mean, as Magnus probably likes still as well, the youth part. Um, so he's just a very rich. He's still playing very quickly, very fast, stuff like that as well. But yeah, this is tough. Magnus with a head shake again there. Yeah, something with the mouse, a little bit of pain. I think if he had a better mouse and wasn't in pain, you probably would see a better Magnus here too as well. This it is amazing. Three, that is swimming. amazing. Black is up a pawn, and your coaches tell you, trade while you're <laughs> ahead. He goes to the end game, and he's losing because the A5 <laughs> pawn is on a dark square, and white's going to go bishop E5, bishop takes D4, or bishop F2, same idea, take on D4, then win the C3 pawn, then win the A5 pawn. It's that simple. How crazy is that, right? When they do tell you, trade when you're up, not when you're down. You trade when you're up, and you lose. And you're like, you know what? I'm not ever doing that again, right? Somehow... He is able to run his king over, but I mean, practically, it still looks very good for white with the two pass. I think what happened was that bishop was a little bit too close to the black king, saving a vital tempo, and the white queenside pawns haven't moved quickly enough. But as you said, this is bullet, and when it, talking about an end game like this, that still gives white good chances to win because the black pass pawns are not even pawns anymore; they're off the board. Yeah, this is. Wait a second. I mean, wait and uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he, probably he, draw, but maybe he, not. B7, knight takes B7, then A7. That was a... a oh, win. gross. That's it. Yeah. And a queen, and they're back to one game. But they're you see Magnus again. 
I mean, he is just like in pain. He's, he's shaking off his hand there. It, it doesn't matter if he wins or loses. So it's clearly not a results-based action. And well, mm -hmm. you know, I hope he doesn't get arthritis and carpal tunnel from playing this match. Yeah, <laughs> one match, right? Yeah, it's supposed to see all the energy there. But no, we just do. We do wish him the best. It's not a. Uh, it's not fun to play in pain in anything. In fact, so it is important that you have the right ergonomics and the right settings and setups for long matches like this, which usually he has, yeah, he's shaking in the middle of the game. You know what I mean? So this mm -hmm. is definitely affecting his play, I think. Um, so it's important at home, guys, to get the right stuff. I actually just bought, uh, I see somebody in the chat says Razor. I just bought Razor yesterday, in fact, from Best Buy. Because it's like, yo, know, you just get, you know, the right stuff when you're playing these online games, guys. It's important. Well, Mag Mags has the right stuff, and he wants to win because the winner of this match is guaranteed $12,000. So a lot at stake while the loser goes down to the loser's quarterfinals. Uh, these guys are good. They should play professionally. Yeah, that's true. I think that would be good advice for them. And right now, Magnus, with the black side of this position, he's up in exchange. He's trying to trade while ahead, but in his own terms, not like last game when Frugia unfortunately stumbled into a bad end game. Absolutely here. As uh, yo, Hold on. Maybe I'm moving a little bit, but I mean, I have the exchange. Practically, I'm just winning. Practically, so I have to work it as he's doing. And make sure I improve my position by moving pieces and pawns ahead, <laughs> which he's doing. He's doing that. Chat? What did he say? Oh, wait. MOE. Mouse over everything. <laughs> MOE. Okay, I like that. I like you. We, we about to get some merch with that. Mouse over everything. Okay. Oof. I think Magnus just, you know, he wiped that dirt off his shoulders there. Like, he's like, all right. Now it's tied match, and Magnus is actually playing more quickly than Ali Reza is, right? We've seen Magnus up on time quite a bit. He's lost some of those time scrambles, except when he had 0.1 seconds remaining. So here it's important for Ali Reza. He needs to settle down. And, uh-oh, wait, why did that bar go so high? It went really high there after Bishop, uh, after H6, maybe F4 or something. Interesting. There's some, yeah. like, H4, G6, Queen H5 stuff. Strange. Yeah, it's impossible to figure out with no time. And you're just going to make these quick moves at the early stages. And give me that D5 square, says Magnus. I'm going to plop my pieces down. And, well, if you take on D5, that's a pass pawn in the center. Takes, takes. And he holds it. Holds the E5 pawn. Rick probably swinging the D1 at some point. Plays A4. Break the structure down. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to see at some point Rook D1, pawn G4. White's just going to keep black tied down to the pass pawn. Uh, but I don't think that it's a big concern. So this is good news for Alireza. The bishop blockades the pawn. The queen is now free to run. And running it, it does. It goes down to a2 and maybe into c2. And rook c2 is going to be quite annoying. That is going to be a very annoying move. Rook c2 anyway. Play rook oh. c3 first. Nice in between. Oh, but that allows rook. I guess he could have mm. played that anyway. Queen g6, yeah, so rook c2, queen g6 anyway. He does play queen 2 F5 is loose. I didn't even realize that. I was just trying to trade queens in an earlier variation. But stealing a pawn, don't blunder checkmate. And oh, again, he trades when he's ahead, like his coaches always tell him. And somehow that was so a bad... Oh, there's, was there rook F8 and bishop C5? I guess not. Yeah, not anymore here. He's worth walking the king around. He's winning. F5 is going to come with a check. Oof. Four F5, check, take, take. And we push. Yeah, and we push. Walk the dogs in the bark. Very easy. Mm -hmm. Push, 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 and push. And, and that's he, that Magnus. He throws in the towel. He's down five seconds and a couple pawns. I mean, he really is in pain right now. Like you can see it yeah. on his face. Uh, I think some people, they try to make that excuse, right? They're like, they're ready. That if they lose the match, oh, something happened. But he's doing it no matter what's happening on the board. And, and as somebody you know, who does struggle with wrist issues, you know, when you don't have a good mouse and you're trying to play speed chess, it can really hurt. Oh, yeah, he'll never have that again. And I think it is this mouse, at least, or at least the setup to do that, it is important to have the right mouse, the right table setting, right uh, everything here. Obviously, a, a mat is good, ergonomic keyboard. This is important if you want to have very long uh, longevity in, obviously, uh, the online space. So it's very good to do that. But, you know, it's just tough. Tough to see because we know he's in pain right now. <sighs> But I think that he's in pain both physically and on the board in this position because White's advantage is through the roof. I think at some point F5 is going to hurt. Like, just throw your pawn forward, play in the canty right. style that we love, right. and go for – there it is. Go for checkmate. There it is. <gasps> you know, it's funny. You said uh, somebody in the chat says chess is a dangerous sport, bro. Like, shoot, you know. <laughs> chess is dangerous, man. Them pawns, you know, those kings that hurt you, bro. You got to be careful. 
So it's a, that's, that's a funny one here, but it is important to definitely work on your game and also your ergonomics. You can play for a long time. Nice sacrifice. We got in a, an aggressive position here. Uh, E6. E6. There it is. Found it. That is maybe the move of the day. If you take with the knight, f7 falls. If you took with the bishop, there was checkmate on d8. So he was rook e7, but now this bishop is pinned, and that's a mate over here as well. That's my first arrows of the day. That's how good the move was. (laughs) Oh. Yeah, e6 is funny. Love tactics. And he does a lot of those. I mean, you know, we've seen him do, when he used to stream, we would see him do puzzles and just blow through puzzles all the time. Nice to do your puzzles. And now it's under 10 minutes remaining. So Magnus, he needs to catch up. It is win by two. This has been very important in certain matches, like in the one between Jose Martinez and Anish. That was the end of the first day of action. But if Magnus can keep this deficit to one, you do get extra time. Nine plus minutes remaining. James, the white piece is here for Magnus. Do you believe in his chances? I do believe in his chances here. I do believe, uh, I mean, he's very clutch under pressure. He's done this many times. He is playing some very strong opposition up two games right now. But, you know, if we don't see it happen in the next three minutes, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So he does have time, maybe two or three more games to get this thing really going here. Um, but, you know, it's uh, it's difficult. I think he can do it. Yeah, so we'll see if he can do what it is, Mike. He gets in this game. He's down a pawn, but he has the pair of bishops. That rook on eight's been hanging for a little bit, but some trades uh, occurred first. And, well, Ali Reza, I mean, he's really handling himself perfectly in this match. He's playing well in critical moments. He's keeping pace when it seems like he's down a bunch of time. And right now, he's down a few seconds, but he's catching up. And here we see that... The pieces are coming off the board. Black's still up a pawn. And, well, it's an extra pawn on the A file. That's always good news. But white has the bishop and white has the lead on time. So 10 seconds advantage for Magnus as he pushes his H pawn. I think he's just done that well today. Giving away a pawn to double his opponent's pawn structure. And after H5 falls, maybe H6 is next. So this position looks really good for Max. Don't blunder checkmate. The king went back, so it avoided that. And the king is going to go back to g2. a7 falls. King for black needs to come up the board. He only has nine seconds. He needs to gobble those pawns. But as long as Magnus has a rook, he should try to flag his opponent. No draw offers. This is, No, don't play that move. Do not trade rooks when your opponent is five seconds. That is probably one of the earliest rules you learn as a top bullet player. Magnus knows better, I think, maybe... The pressure of the moment is getting to him. Just to acknowledge James's internet gambit, it happened again. So we will get him back as soon as we can. But right now, we are running down the stretch of this match. Magnus Carlsen down by two points to Ali Reza Faruja. Faruja has played an amazing match thus far. He deserves his lead. Will he be able to keep it? Well, he's got a great center. Magnus chisels at it with pawn to f6. And we see that Faruja takes an open file. His bishop on e3 is loose. He will not blunder that, I don't believe. He brings his next rook on over. But Magnus finally finishes his development. So I think this position, it looks very unclear to my eyes. Bishops, we like them in open space against knights. But the knights are actually causing some problems, and that's why we saw Alireza take the knight on g6. It was attacking the bishop on e5. Queen b3, a bad blunder, apparently. There must be some tactics over on the king side against this white king. The king did slide to g, uh, h2 to avoid any pressure down the g file. The bishop slides back in touch with the king. Magnus, he jettisons a pawn. He is up a couple seconds, but that probably was not the right decision. And well, all the reason says, you give me a pawn, I'll use that pawn. Here it goes up the A file. The bishop on D3 hit the rook. It also stops that pawn's progress, at least for now. And with the rooks off the board, that should make Al Reza feel safer with his king. His king on H2 tucked away. The black king also safe, but that outside pass pawn, that is a nuisance that Magnus will have to continue to keep his eye on. He is up a few seconds. Al Reza trying to trade some pieces. He plays B4. We might see knight C5 next, trying to get those knights off the board, and there they go. But this outside pass pawn, it's a straggler. It's by itself. It doesn't have a companion. But that Let's check me in one. Oh my goodness, Magnus Carlsen hangs mate in one, and Faruja takes a three-point lead. Magnus has enough time, right? There is five minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this match, but you cannot give away checkmate like that, not against Faruja, because Faruja has proved to be a difficult opponent to defeat under any circumstance, but now when your back is against a prover- proverbial wall, you don't have time remaining, and it's going to be a tactical affair, a slugfest against Faruja. You can't afford that, but actually, it seems like in this game, Magnus, 
He's getting away with some of those choices earlier. D6 is loose. D6 is a problem. And it seems like Knight F6 as well. That's a fork that wins material. And I think you can... Oh, he, he, there's a fork of his own. That's why he brought the king out to F2. And instead, he now grabs the rook, grabs a pawn. Up a pawn is Magnus Carlsen. Also has a 10-second lead on the clock. So he is doing very well in this game. He needs it. He cannot afford to let this advantage slip. He's transitioning into a several pawn up rook end game. And here's where match strategy comes under play. What Farouj should do is play this out. It doesn't matter if he's down three queens. You play this out until check and mate, except Farouj resigned. And as soon as he did, we have Canty back. James! Hey, you just missed a checkmate in one, and then Ferruja, unfortunate for him, once he ballooned that lead to three, it's now back to two because Magnus took that last game. Yep. Yeah, this game, right now, we see a position where um, white has stabilized the knight on d4. Uh, we just saw a swap of pieces. Black's position, A-OK. -okay. Getting the king out to h7. There's luft for the king. And it looks like Magnus trying to open up the queen side. So you play on both flanks. It seems like, hey, we do have James back for real. So James, we just see queen f4. It looks like a mating attack coming down to h2. Absolutely. No, it was, uh, yeah, I was saying um, that is the time is really low. In fact, it meaning like three minutes. So some, something's going to happen. We're either going to six game match or somebody wins here. And, and it, Ruja has not given up the lead yet. It's not oh. given up the lead. So it's very difficult to say who's going to win this year. I mean, well, Ruja, right? This is looking good to win it. But Magnus needs to do a lot more if he's going to try to make this boy a tiebreak. This is tough right now. And a few games ago, it was rook against rook, and each side had a pawn. And Magnus was up 15 to 5 seconds, and he allowed mm -hmm. a draw. Do not allow a draw here. You could trade queens. That's fine. In fact, now it looks mm -hmm. like even a winning endgame because g2 is on a light square. But just play this out. Play quickly. Do not try to find the perfect moves. Try to find good enough moves. And just do not allow your last pawn to go. He will not do that. He can place his bishop on d7 or on b5, and now you flag your opponent. He's holding. He's holding 15 seconds. Yeah, six seconds here. White, mm hmm, but do like, not. Like, oh, like, no, like, like. no, he allowed a draw by repetition, and that's the one thing he couldn't do. What he missed was king to f7. The king could have escaped because if the white king moved up to board d7, there was a move like c5 with check. So Magus allows Ali Reza to keep his two point lead, and that is really bad news for the world number one because he can only afford to be down one point when this match clock expires. He has to win now, and you have to go for it. He's going to do it with the white pieces here, but we actually have a little bit of a hold. He takes, takes. Hey, castles, queen of three. Three, six, three, six, seven, up the pawn. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be annoying, though, because that rook lands on e2, and I mm. guess there's no time to put a5, a4, because white will push his own pawn up to a4 and stop that. So he completes his development. By the way, rook f to b1, king to f1. That rook was almost trapped over there. Instead, the rook is going after those queenside pawns. Chat, what do you think is going to happen, chat? We got a minute and 50 seconds. Chat, it is on you. What do you think is going to happen? Is he going to be able to do it? Him meaning Magnus. What do you think? Let's hear the thoughts in the chat right now, guys. Right now, we need to see it. Who? It's going to win. Oh, man, that's a... He blundered. He blundered. But he Magnus can afford here. to draw because look at the overall match. Like one minute, 30 seconds remain. If he draws this, then he has to win the follow-up game. And he's just letting this one go. But look at Ali Reza's clock. Down under 20 seconds. A 10-second lead for Magnus Carlsen. And it looks like, objectively, the game should be a draw. Objectively, definitely 100%. 15 seconds. 15 seconds there for Ruja. I'm is moving oh, so slow. Oh, what a move! He wants to pass G4. one of his own. Oh my goodness! And, and Faruja better force the draw now, otherwise Magnus might win this game. He's going to Magnus can flag him. Magnus may be down two pawns. Win on time. Be shameless. It doesn't matter how you get it. It matters if you get it done. But here it is. This is the scariest part of chess right now. This mm -hmm. right here is scarier than anything you've ever faced because mm -hmm. somebody is going to blunder the rook. Usually it happens. And we see 3.5 for Ali Reza. The thing about Magnus is he needs to watch out because at some point, uh, Ali Reza might do the thing where he puts the rook under attack. But look at Magnus. He's down to three seconds himself. He needs to move. He needs to do quick. And that is a draw. No! But Magnus...
he, he doesn't get the win, but he's 25 seconds. The last game will take place, and that means if Magnus wins, we get extra time. Faruja only needs a draw. You see what's funny? He goes for the G6 set. I know this is a Pierce, but he has to play more modern-like um, in this way because he was looking and hoping for King's Indian, which is understandable. It tells you a lot. When you need a win, what do you go for? King's Indian. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But at this point, this will turn into a Pierce or Perk. Back with e4 and d4, he didn't go c4 at all here. Very still likely to be some type of King's Indian, but it is not the same. It's not the same. Magnus needs to win. Chat, will he do it, Chat? Is he going to win? Is Magnus going to win or not? The essential question, because otherwise this match concludes with Ali Reza Fruja as the winner. And this position looks really good for Black as he steals a pawn in the center. And Magnus ahead by six seconds. He's been faster at the early stages of the game. But in time scrambles, it's always Fruja who has the upper hand. <laughs> Correct. In these time scrambles, I mean, he had upper hand the whole match. Magnus never got a chance to be up in the match. Never wow. seen that before, actually. But never got a chance to be up. But right there, that was a pretty bad blunder from Faruja giving up the C3 pawn. And here come Black's pawn storming up the board. That bishop on A8, that may be the hero that Magnus needs. Uh-oh, but the E5 pawn is good. I thought he was going to go E4 at some point. He drops his central pawn. And now, advantage back to Faruja. Time is up. It is zeros. This is the moment of truth here, Chad. Mm -hmm. Well, Magnus... Oh, he's made Most it. Lose. Oh, he's made it. I can't he's, even say nothing. It's done. For Ruja. Yeah, to... Whew. Good. That's game. That's match. Fire For... on fire. And With a clap see, there at the end. You see the gentlemanly clap. And for Ruja, he doesn't even celebrate. I mean, he's still probably feeling the adrenaline, the tension of that match.